Curling in the small town part of Manitoba is, is really big in the winter. It's something for the community to do and it really brings the community together. We can hold annual events like our bond spiels and our, and our weekly nights. It's really something to do for everyone in the community and can do it from any age. You can win a pair of tickets for the 2023 Tim Hortons Briar in London or the 2023 BKT Tires and OK Tire Men's Worlds in Ottawa, plus $500. Or maybe equip your team with a set of four of Asham's new Ultra Force brushes. And at the same time, support the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame and Museum and Curl Manitoba's Curling for Life Endowment Fund. Raffle tickets are available now. One for $5, four for $10, 10 for $20. Buy online at fundingchange.ca slash curlmanitoba or scan the QR code on your screen right now. Power Frost surrounded East St. Paul Arena in the bright light of day. Outside, of course, we're in the evening. Draw number four of the Curl Manitoba Scotty's Tournament of Hearts presented by Rocky Mountain Equipment. And we will have another really uh, top team for us, uh, another great game, an established name team playing a young team with lots of potential, lots of aspirations and lots of skill. So uh, we've got the uh, St. Vital Altona team, uh, Jennifer Jones with uh, the Mackenzie Zacharias World Junior Championship team defending Manitoba Scotties champions. Uh, line up for tonight, it is a five person team as you know so there will be uh, chopping and changing throughout the week and for tonight the Jones team lineup is Lauren Lenentine at lead, Mackenzie Zacharias will throw second stones, Carly Burgess will throw third, Jennifer Jones of course is the skip for that team. Their opponents are from the East St. Paul Curling Club, it is the Christy Watling team. They uh, are, uh, or Christy is aided by Laura Burtnick, Emily Raffinson, Sarah Pike and coach Tom Clasper. At the moment in time, the Jones record is 1-0 in their pool, Lisa McLeod and Abby Ackland, uh, that team skipped by Megan Walter, both also at 1-0. Um, in the other pool, just uh, to keep the standings up to date, uh, one team at 2-0, that is the Caitlin Laws team. One team, surprisingly, at 0-2, that is the Chelsea Carey team. The other four two teams in that pool do have the one and one record. So we're underway with the, the opening shot of the game. The opening shot delivered by Sarah Pike, lead of the East St. Paul team, the Watling team. And uh, that of course tells you Jennifer Jones and her team won last rock with the uh, pregame draw to the button at the end of the practice session. Resby Coots with you. Uh, um, for the third time today, we're having so much fun, we decided to do the evening draw as well. And when I say we, I do mean my uh, partner of uh, two earlier games today, Barry Gorlick. And uh, Barry, welcome back to the uh, broadcast booth and uh, uh, what should be another interesting game. Uh, 
Reflect on the first three draws in general of this Manitoba Scotties Tournament of Hearts and uh, what comes to your mind when I ask you to do that? Three takeaways uh, from the first three draws, Resby. Number one, the ice conditions and this set of curling rocks are absolutely spectacular. Uh, all thanks to uh, Greg Owasco and his team. He's taken this not very brand new barn and turned it into a world-class curling facility aided by more than Similar 100 path. volunteers. Number two, uh, good. Laura's it's rock. early moments in any Three bond spiel, but the teams have no, really picked up okay. on the nuances of the ice, the amount of line's movement, good. the liveliness of the rocks, okay, yeah. and the way in which to no, build okay, scoring right, ends later in yep. the game. Number three, more. Go, in go, this go, day go, and go, age go. of Hard. online sports betting, who would have bet that Chelsea yeah. Carey would start at 0-2? Uh, very few people, but yeah. that's what's happened. Yeah. Why is that? They aren't playing badly. Some of the teams who are younger and are even fresh to events such as this are playing really, really well. The parity between all of these teams is unprecedented in Manitoba, and we're in for such a treat as we now enjoy the beginnings of draw four. And I'm going to add one to it, and it's a very specific... Uh, uh, team shout out, uh, it crosses my mind that the most impressive team performance of the day so far is that of Emma Jensen's team, not in winning the afternoon game against uh, Chelsea Carey, although that was an impressive uh, feat in itself, but the fact is that on their opening draw the Jensen team did not score a point. They lost in five ends, uh, uh, left the ice clearly uh, had their conversation and uh, uh, were able to, as they say, park that, and they came out and played a wonderful game. I think a um, tremendous amount of credit goes to those four young women, also to Al Jensen, the coach, who, uh, who clearly would have had a role in, in helping those girls get past that loss and refocus on, uh, on the win. So that's, uh, that's one of the real uh, takeaways for me from the early part of the day. Very easy for first timers to have a handshake after five ends and say, ah, oh, rats, we're out of our league. Uh, back to the drawing board. Not only did they not do that, they held Carey to 10 ends, didn't have Hammer in the extra end, and put her in a position where she didn't have a shot to win the game. So uh, full credit to them and full credit to their coach. So through all of that ramble, um, the Red Stones being the Team Jones Stones. Uh, we see a lying a pair, one uh, with a little rub and roll in behind a couple of corner guards, and uh, uh, it is the second second stone for Team Watling, thrown by Emily Rothenson, uh, looking at uh, a sort of a reasonably thin double kill. Here we are halfway through the first end, and Jennifer Jones with more experience than anyone else on any of the sheets of ice tonight, is already set up to get an opening end deuce. And full credit to Emily Raffinson, uh, would have liked to have stuck on that, but uh, certainly a double kill in that situation is, uh, is a wonderful uh, performance. <laughs> a perfect setup of corner guards for both teams really, but Jennifer, as she tends to do, is aggressive in the opening ends, and she's going to try to sink one that will be very tough to get to. The key here is it cannot go behind the T-line. It has to be in front of the T-line so that it cannot be uh, frozen to or easily tapped back. And the shot delivered by Emily Zacharias, or not by Emily, Mackenzie Zacharias, uh, who has moved down from the skip position, skip of the defending champion team here, skip of the world junior champion team a couple of years ago. Um, not an easy thing to do, to move from skip of your own team to uh, a, a completely different position in the middle of that same team. It does bear mentioning too, uh, for those who are perhaps less familiar with the Watling team, they were the finalists in Carberry at the Provincials, won by the Zacharias team. So what you've really got 
is a blend of the two top teams in the province with somebody named Jones added to the mix. Not a bad set of curlers. Not a bad addition. So, so we saw there uh, Laura Burtnick, another famous name in the sport of curling here in Manitoba. And uh, a nice run back to remove that rock from behind. Uh, sticks out there, so if they do get behind it, now when she runs one in, she's running her own in. Carly Burgess is, uh, throws the third stones. And as we've seen throughout the day, as it gets to the hog line, it snaps. They do pull it past right behind that yellow guard. And uh, as if I had foresight, uh, they'll be able to run that yellow. Carly Burgess, a slightly newer name to the Manitoba curling scene, but someone well-known in Atlantic Canada and a former junior world champion based out of Halifax. Just missed it on the run back. Needed it to curl just a little bit more. And Jennifer immediately goes for the draw to split the rings. Having hammer. Jennifer is a master at the arithmetic associated with curling games. She looks to get two at minimum whenever she has hammer, and she most certainly looks to force the other team to take no more than one whenever she doesn't have hammer. And if you keep that up through an entire game, you end up getting double the points, and guess what? you win every game. Jennifer's uh, patented that approach to uh, the math of a curling game. And she has got that pair of stones in place to do exactly that. Christy Watling will go to the hack for her first shot. Just uh, Barry, so you know, uh, in between games, I did have a communication from a very good friend who was watching faithfully and indicated they could, uh, uh, we should have a few more score updates. So for her benefit, I will advise her that at this moment in time, it is 0 0, zero, zero and 0 0. So the Watling, uh, the left hander, throws uh, her in turn, makes the wide roll and really does sit, spins back a little bit, but it would appear that there is a hole for Jones to throw through. Just rolled six inches too far. Even if she rolled in behind, Jennifer Jones in the first end is prepared to be aggressive and take a chance. She might have played the fairly short run back regardless, but she's most certainly trying to come through a port that is uh, plenty wide enough for a Jen Jones throwing rock. So the out turn is underway. And you'll notice that uh, while Carly Burgess throws the third stones, Mackenzie Zacharias is in the rings uh, calling the, the line. Jennifer curls across and rolls to leave that biter out in the back corner behind the two yellows. For club curlers everywhere, standing as we are at the end of the sheet, let me tell you how difficult that shot looked in the first end. It had to be thrown with perfect weight. She had to put the broom down in the right spot, even though they hadn't played a stone to that spot yet. And she had to have her brushers jump it at exactly the right moment, all of which happened. Made shot. Made shot. 
Uh, Christy is playing a hit on this top red rock. She thinks if she uh, gets the roll, she can still be shot rock. So we shall see. It seems with the amount of curl there that in my mind she can't really bury. She's also throwing this pretty hard. So maybe she's readjusted to play a bit of a slash double. She will hit it pretty much on the nose. Yellow lies one, that is the Watling team from East St. Paul. This is interesting. Jennifer just threw her out turn and it made a nice, gradual, very controllable move into the rock she was trying to hit. She's now playing her in turn and her comment to Mackenzie was, I'm seeing the in. That is Jen Jones code for, I'm just gonna throw it even though but nobody else has yet in this game. <laughs> That's how much faith she has in her in turn. And this will be another up weight shot taking out the variables of the ice maybe trying to move it. So it's underway, the Jones in turn hit. She needs to come to the nose of this stone. Does exactly that. And makes the nose hit, bites for the deuce on the opening end. So Jennifer Jones and the Zacharias team Go ahead by a, core, a score of 2 nothing after the first completed end. We'll be back with the second momentarily. Today's sponsor, Sunrise Credit Union. Building a brighter future together. Eat. Meet. Stay. Canad Inn's destination centers are your home for hospitality, with 10 locations in Manitoba and one in North Dakota, featuring the finest in accommodations, food and beverage, entertainment, banquet and conference facilities, and so much more. For the best service and best value, your only stop is Canad Inn's. Call today at 1-888-33-CANAD or visit us right now at canadins.com. Where can you find handmade pizza, classic burgers, scrumptious salads, the finest Manitoba sourced fried chicken, and so, and so, so much more. Chicken Chef, bring your appetite. We'll take care of the rest. Back in the East St. Paul Arena where Jennifer Jones is one of three teams who scored deuces on the opening end. Uh, Alyssa Calvert, two, to lead Lisa McLeod, two nothing. Abby Ackland, the team skipped by Megan Walter, two, to take a two nothing lead on Grace Beaudry. And here, our opening rock of the end, a Jones team guard touching the center line. Which opens the opportunity for us to talk to our evening audience about the no tick rule, Resby. Which we will do as time goes along. But here the uh, Watling team plays an out turn to set a corner guard. Need some sweeping to get it over the hog line. And in fact, do not. Having played lead for a good long time, I know that Nothing irritates even the most even-tempered of skips the, more than a rock left on the other side of the hog line. Whether it applies to the Scotties or not, um, there was a tradition in Manitoba curling that in fact there was a penalty associated with that resby, if you recall it. Never having bothered to pay the penalty, I really don't recall, but the uh, Jones team does go right behind their own guard, biting the button, and still touching the center line, but poking out a little bit on the outside. Yes, sir. They'll ignore that. 
Try to make the corner guard this time. Needs a little more weight. This then becomes for the Watling team a game of some patience. They have to get one of their stones buried around a corner guard. While at the same time knowing that somebody's gonna have to make a run back double or a couple of doubles in order to clear out the center that Jennifer Jones is very intently and very intentionally clogging up with granite. Mackenzie Zacharias is asked to play the longer center guard. Slides a little bit too deep. Because those stones are so close, it's just too tempting for the Watling team now to try to clear them both away and to roll away at least to a corner guard position uh, with Rafson's yellow rock that she's throwing now. Yep. Jennifer Jones was not unhappy with that outcome, even though it's a yellow rock now guarding her red rock in the forefoot. But what she's called is a come around shot by Mackenzie Zacharias to overlap at least in part the yellow rock so there will be no straight run back available. What we're seeing really, Barry, um, could be described almost as a, as a no mercy strategy that uh, Jennifer Jones uh, Having been to several of these events in the past, having been through uh, the traditional delay of the opening of the late draw due to the opening ceremonies, etc., cetera, um, not going to take foolish chances, but very, uh, very much uh, would not be unhappy with the prospect of a, a let's say, an eight-in game to uh, you know get out of the arena a little early. Well said, and especially where um, physical and emotional fatigue comes into play for everyone, but perhaps a little more so for those curlers who've been here many times before. So again, the, uh, the guards are moved, but leaves a guard, not perfect center guard anymore, but partial cover and they will try to go partially behind it into the uh, full 12 foot, bite the eight foot, cornered under the yellow above the red. I think not as deep as Jennifer would have wanted but they, it still works as a center guard. The main thing is, so far throughout this end, the team with Hammer has been chasing, and that's never where you want to be, especially against Jennifer Jones. Laura Burtnick is trying to peel off a couple of guards. And does that. They finally get the center clear. Clear, but perhaps not for long.
She did get that rub, she did get that roll, but not far enough. And it does leave the rock in the forefoot, biting the button, pretty much wide open, the opportunity for Laura Burtnick to play past the guard, but probably get a little bit of a roll under that long guard. As we saw this afternoon, this sheet in particular has a lot of movement. And so that rock is very capable of being removed with a nice inside roll. Leans that way, not really a roll. It's uh, half open, more than half open. He heard reference to 11.4. That was the hog-to-hog -hog time on the last rock thrown by Carly Burgess. Jennifer now is planning to throw about the same speed, knowing that with her outturn, she should get at least as much movement as Carly did with hers. So it is underway. It is Jennifer Jones' first stone of the end. Sweeping is bringing it up closer to the center line, but it will sit open and leave the same opportunity for Christy Watling to play past. A little different line, Barry. You would know this being a left-hander yourself, that it, it is not the same line of delivery. It's um, about a six inch difference yeah. in the starting point of the rock but if you run a laser the whole length of the sheet, what that effectively does is change the entire running path of the rock. Plus it's her intern, and any curler, right-handed or left-hander, will normally get a little more movement throwing their intern just by nature of the way in which your arm extends from the shoulder. So you're going to see a much different path get the sweep just past the guard and they will get uh, a little bit of more roll under. It's still open but not as. Um, as Mackenzie says to Jennifer, it is this time for sure going to roll away to the outside. And what we are really working toward with a hit and roll out here is a blank end. Yeah even though it's the second end. The Watling team would not be satisfied to take a single point, even this early in the game. So they'll take their chances in the next end if Jennifer makes this one. And she does make the contact, does roll wide to the eight foot as predicted. And Christy Watling will play the blank. Just following up on the difference between a left-hander and a right-hander. She's just asked for more ice. I yep. was about to say that that looked like minimum ice, but she knows that her intern is going to move a little bit, and she only wants to get at most half of this rock, and she's going to be throwing it hard. So it should track poker straight. But she is going to get the nose hit for a single point, uh, an unforced error, an unfortunate uh, turn of events for the Watling team as they will go uh, to the third end down 
2-1 to Jennifer Jones. Jennifer Jones with the hammer. We'll be back with end number three in a moment. Today's sponsor, PharmaSafe. Canada's Community Pharmacy is proud to support Canada's Community Game. Asham Curling Supply. Superior fit, comfort, and performance. Asham Curling Shoes are the best we've ever used. Hi folks, I'm Arnold Asham, and our product is always satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Asham Curling Supplies. That's your best delivery of the day. You can win a pair of tickets for the 2023 Tim Hortons Briar in London or the 2023 BKT Tires and OK Tire Men's Worlds in Ottawa, plus $500. Or maybe equip your team with a set of four of Asham's new Ultra Force brushes. And at the same time, support the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame and Museum and Curl Manitoba's Curling for Life Endowment Fund. Raffle tickets are available now. One for $5, four for $10, 10 for $20. Buy online at fundingchange.ca slash curlmanitoba or scan the QR code on your screen right now. Jennifer Jones over Christy Watling. We look across uh, to sheet A, the Ackland Walter team leads Grace Beaudry 2-1, Beaudry scoring one on the second end. And we look across to sheet a, where the Calvert team has stolen. We're not ex sure exactly yet how much they've stolen. Scorekeepers standing in the way of the score at this moment in time. Oh, I was wrong. It was a McLeod single point, so that is a 2-1 Calvert over McLeod. The McLeod team was playing a long angle run in to try to score, and we thought that it was to remove the shot stone, but it was obviously to remove the second shot stone. So 2-1, Calvert over McLeod, 2-1, Ackland over Beaudry, and 2-1, Jones over Watling. Jones with hammer. First red stone of the end, Jones stone into the top of the eight-foot circle. Sarah Pike with a hit. So in the first end, the Watling team, even though they didn't have Hammer, tried mixing it up a little bit with Jennifer Jones, and that didn't turn out as well as they would have liked. So now they're, at least at the moment, uh, playing this end pretty clean. But Jennifer Jones ignores the Yellowstone in the rings, and she'll throw a corner guard because uh, She's got last rock, and as you've said before, her intent is to score two. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. Okay. Yeah. We're trying to guard half of it, right? Once again, Resby, tonight we're seeing on sheet B a good solid six feet of curl, which means that a single guard out front does not fully guard any stone in the rings behind it. So at minimum, you need a couple of staggered guards to protect uh, any shot in the forefoot. This one's coming in a little deep, unfortunately. So uh, Ice Tech Greg Owasco uh, gets full credit for an exceptional job, uh, uh, but he will acknowledge that he's not yet satisfied. And uh, as he works through the first day, there's always the challenges of just simply being the first day. Uh, but one of them uh, is an opening ceremony that changes the, the uh, cadence of the event and uh, a number of different things like that. So uh, uh, we'll see the ice slightly different tomorrow, I think. We might see a little more curl yet, but we'll see on that. Speaking of seeing, I'm looking out at the crowd, Resby. I don't see an empty seat anywhere in the building, so full credit to the spectators who've decided to wander over here on the first evening of play. Um, there are even people sitting in the bleachers 
in behind the stage seating within the curling surface itself. So there's a very nice crowd of spectators, which makes it just terrific for the athletes. Who well, are the athletes do here. love the, uh, it's, it's a bit nerve wracking for the uh, first timers, but uh, they quickly learn uh, to appreciate and enjoy the unique experience that, uh, that championship curling in, a, in an arena like this is. So Watling had been talking about a guard slides deep into the forefoot and uh, Jennifer will look at a double kill. Moves them both, leaves the yellow as Shot Rock biting the 12 or the 8 foot. And Christy will play a hit. And we do have a score correction. We were right, that was a steal on the Team Calvert McLeod game. Uh, Calvert stole a point, it had been inadvertently marked on the McLeod side. So that game is 3-0 for Calvert over McLeod. Facing a couple of yellows, Joan, and, and not an angle that really is a, a double kill except by accident. Uh, Jones is asking Carly Burgess to throw an intern hit, hoping to get just a little across center and rub and roll over to the side of the eight foot. Rolls. Perfectly to the corner of the eight foot for shot stone. Exactly where Jennifer asked her to roll to. And the beauty of that is, in order to get the red stone out and clear the back yellow, it has to be hit slightly on the outside, which will result in the shot rock rolling into the 12 foot. And Jennifer has zero worries at all about any yellow rocks in the 12 foot. She will soon be playing into the four foot. Well, she's going to make contact, but she's going to roll out completely. Making the Jones team's job on their next one even easier. So at this stage, uh, the Jones team uh, will wait for a miss. If they don't get a miss, they'll play a blank to go to the even number end with last rock. Team outside, sitting the 12 foot. For those who are a little bit newer to the viewing of a curling game at this level, the idea of having last rock in the last or 10th end is everything to a skip of the caliber of Jennifer Jones. Having won the hammer, she had the hammer in the first end, which is an odd numbered end, so now that she has the opportunity, possibly, to shift that, to have the hammer in the last end, all she ever wants in any curling game is to have a rock in her hand to win the game with her final stone. And that's something that is golden to someone with the skill set and confidence level of Jennifer Jones. And that's what she's thinking about doing right now. And history has proven it's a pretty high asset to have uh, Jennifer Jones' last shot to win. Uh, Christy Watling will play the wide hit. She'll hit the roll to the center. Gets rid of the Jones stone. And this should play out to a blank.
So it's Jennifer Jones with her first shot of the end. In turn hit over here in the corner. Nose hit. So well, they'll try to hit and roll across the center into the back, maybe to get a little bit behind the red one, but certainly to change the, the shot for the, the last shot of the end. This is an interesting conversation between Jennifer Jones and Mackenzie Zacharias in behind the back line. They've already just looked up at their own team's time clock and thought to themselves they'll try to save a little bit of time by having her glide down the ice as she's doing right now to be in the hack, prepared to throw her last one, knowing it's going to be a straightforward shot, just in case they need to bank some time for the later ends if the play gets more complicated than this. Save a second or two here, a second or two there by uh, the end of the game. If you've saved a second on each of your 20 stones, it's uh, 20 seconds that you've gained. So she throws the end turn hit, looking for the blank. Burgess and Lenantine, the sweepers, and she will hit and roll away, and it is the blank. So after three ends, Jennifer Jones and her young team play uh, playing Watling lead 2 nothing. We'll be back with our fourth end momentarily. We hope you're enjoying this Manitoba Championship curling. Brought to you by Seagram's 83, Manitoba's favorite Canadian whiskey. At McMunn and Yates, we've always believed that good neighbors make for better communities. McMunn and Yates has everything you need for your next project right at your fingertips. And McMunnandYates.com will always be there, ready to help. When life gets busy, getting everything done can be tough. With PharmaSafe's mobile prescription service, order your prescriptions right from your phone so they're ready when you are. Download the PharmaSafe app today. Live well with PharmaSafe. Back in the East St. Paul Arena, the 2023 Manitoba Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Jones having blanked and number three. Old Hammer in the fourth, and Sarah Pike with her first shot attempt. Gets to the center line, doesn't get to the rings, so uh, can't be touched. Can't be touched. No, it can be touched. It can't be moved off the center line or into the rings. I suppose I'm thinking back to the way we touch rocks in club <laughs> play, Resby. There's a hammer. There's no shot quite as nuanced as a touch that would leave that stone on the rings. So that rock touching center line six inches in front of the rings and Jennifer Jones immediately asked Lauren Lenantine to go behind it. Fear of being too deep, but in fact it's not. It's into the top of the forefoot biting the button. Sarah Pike attempting to follow. Does get pretty much right to the nose of it, taps it back a wee bit, and Jones will come in on top of it.
this now is officially game on. You're going to see another rock put on top of the stone just delivered by the Watling team. And we're going to end up with a very cluttered middle portion of the rings. Hoping, hoping to get a little bit more to the center line, but uh, certainly that's an exceptional placement of that stone. And Emily Raffinson is asked to follow and put it in front of that stone. combination of weight and line here, this Yellowstone doesn't curl up quite enough, it taps red, it leaves the yellow open. And with that yellow rock sitting open, Jones will try to hit and roll again to the center line. She's trying to get a bunch of red rocks lined up up the center line. Wanting to keep all of her red rocks in play, which is why she called just control weight. 10 seconds hog to hog, something that the sweepers can manage, which they're really managing, hoping to get a nice roll. Rolled further than she wanted, but in fact, if you're going to roll a bit, you would need to roll right over. So that's a very lonely looking yellow rock at the moment, even though it's second shot. It's surrounded by reds, and there are a total of three reds in the rings. The end is setting up nicely for Jennifer to score multiple points. And it's, and it's nicely set, that contact on the red pushes the yellow across the face of the one in the button. So, so uh, the objective here for em Emily Robinson is to play a hit and roll back into the center, into the button area in front of that shot stone, but she's not going to curl up quite enough. She's going to hit and roll to the outside. In fact, rolls right away, out of play. She threw that well, but this ice, as much movement as it has, if you throw up weight, we've seen all day that they tend to run pretty straight, and that was, uh, that was an up weight throw. Never really had a chance. So now Team Jones elects to remove that center guard. They're hoping to get uh, not quite half this stone. They'll roll to the side to bite over in the corner of the rings. Keep a red one in play. And could not get it to spin in. That's interesting. Uh, even Jennifer Jones seems incapable of communicating effectively <laughs> with a piece of granite, but she sure tried. Oftentimes on the last half rotation, a stone like that will make a little bit of a final move to the paint, but it didn't happen this time. These stones, by the way, are owned by Curl Manitoba, are only two years old and are extremely lively in the sense that they come off each other uh, with tremendous rotation and tremendous bounce, which might sound odd when you're talking about a piece of granite, but the striking bands are narrow enough that they're known as lively, and Greg Owasco's ring ice, that is the painted surfaces, which at curling clubs normally can be a little bit sticky, are just as lively as the rest of the sheet. So that's a good combination for getting movement. So we see the uh, contact on the red, contact and kills a pair of reds. That shot uh, really This is an important shot in this end. 
it has to be made, otherwise leaving more than one red rock in the rings really puts the Watling team in trouble. And it was played beautifully. A very, very heavy throw though that uh, turned out well. A shot actually, uh, you know, Christy Watling wondering about options, Laura Burtnick, uh, frankly pretty insistent that they should play the, uh, as she called it, the blast. So now they're, uh, they're going to play the hit. They want to roll to the right as we look at that long shot of the house. Key point to that being they want to get as far away as possible from Jones having the opportunity to roll across behind that tight corner guard. But she's coming to it and she's going to curl. In fact, she's going to get the roll, not far enough to get behind. Carly Burgess. Playing to hit, she will roll outside behind the guard. And overburied. So there you heard the good example of uh, Sorry, sk about the freeze, Skip basically. Watling simply not wanting to play a draw no. here. She I can see in her mind's eye like not just ticking that red guard, but in fact curling up enough to punch it forward uh, to have the red stones, the Jones team, lying to oh, and able to go to the other side. So they're going to play to run back that rock that just sits outside the rings. Try to make the double kill. That's right. a case of the best shot being the freeze, but it's also by some magnitude the toughest shot. So she's playing to come to the inside of that high rock, but will overcurl. Hits it, rolls away. The Jones team will draw to the other side, split the rings, and be set for the two that we talked about as their objective at the start of the end. Which kind of materialized from nothing other than a missed shot just now. The Carly Burgess roll behind the guard was a, was the setup for that. So it's Jennifer Jones, an intern draw, she wants to get to the T-line. So as you heard, nose hit works. Forces Jennifer Jones to play a hit with her last rock for two. Remember, on this out turn hit for the left hander, she did over curl with her previous rock hit and rolled out.
This one will come to the nose of that stone, will sit. Rolls a little inside to lie one. And Jennifer Jones again comes to the hack with expedition. Saving another couple of seconds for later in the game. She'll throw an intern hit, needs to simply stay in the rings for a deuce. So the hit is underway. So having started with Hammer in the first end, knowing she needed one blank and wanting to get two points every time she has Hammer, Jennifer Jones has scripted a 4-1 lead exactly as the playbook would dictate. And does lead 4-1 after four. Looking at the other sheets, Calvert uh, and McLeod, a pair of blanks, 3-0 Calvert after four. And Grace Beaudry scored a single in the third. That game tied 2-2, the Beaudry, uh, Megan Walter, Ackland game. We'll be back with end number four in our feature game in just a moment. Thank you for joining us for this Manitoba Championship Draw, brought to you by Seagram's VO. Masterfully blended, distinctly Canadian. At Viterra, we believe in the power of connection. Our world-leading agriculture network connects producers and consumers to supply top quality food ingredients each and every day. Our team takes great pride in working closely with farmers to help feed the world. It's something we've been doing for over 100 years. And as an industry leader, we're dedicated to playing a critical role in meeting the needs of a growing world. Because together, we're stronger and achieve more. Asham Curling Supply. Superior fit, comfort, and performance. Asham Curling Shoes are the best we've ever used. Hi folks, I'm Arnold Asham, and our product is always satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Asham Curling Supplies. That's your best delivery of the day. So with a pair of deuces, the Jones team, two in the first, two in the fourth, leads by a score of four to one, and they put their first rock into the top of the 12-foot circle. Watling will ask her lead, Sarah Pike, to give her a corner guard. Sarah will feel much better about that shot. Uh, everybody has to settle down and in the fifth end, uh, draw weight seems to be pretty obvious and pretty available to each of these athletes. This is Lauren Lenantine's second stone of the end. It's going to overcurl the, the guard line, comes a little bit nice. deep, nice. sits on the center line. I must say, Resby, no reflection on the two of us, but Jennifer Jones provides the best running commentary as a rock is coming down the ice of anyone I've ever seen. There are no secrets with her. Sarah Pike's second stone of the end as they attempt to draw behind her own corner guard. She's gonna come deep in the rings. But will stay in the back of the 12th or the eight foot circle as shot rock. Commentators curse. No sooner had I said everybody has their draw weight. But this sheet is still running very, very nicely. So we're going to go around the outside of this corner guard. The out turn, the top board weight. 
hard sweep to get it by that corner guard and she is going to get it just to rub the yellow. Didn't move the guard, really moved it a couple of inches perhaps. Watling will now ask her second, Emily Raffinson, to follow and get one into the top of the eight foot circle. Starts to curl as it approaches the hog line. This one's under throwing. That's 16 seconds hog to hog. So Jennifer now has the opportunity to go after that same rock. The, the guard was moved over two or three inches and uh, uh, having seen it once, very unlikely to miss it twice. Or, one of the best feelings in club curling, at least. A chance for redemption, Rasby. She's got a beaut. She's going to miss the guard by plenty. Try to curl it up a little bit, get it to hang on the back corner of the rings, but it will hit and roll away. It doesn't die, it stays in play, but will have no bearing on the rest of this end. Happy to have that rock roll out. Uh, Jennifer's really not interested in having any of her rocks behind the T-line that... Uh, to work as stoppers, catchers. So Emily Raffinson hoping to have just about three or four feet more weight to get past that guard. Not too deep in the rings. But again, as it gets to the hog line, away it goes. And it will bury into the eight foot. A little deep. So they talk about double peel, they talk about following the draw. This is the textbook call with a three point lead even without last rock. The Jones team is in control of this game and the last thing they want is to give the Watling team too easy an opportunity to score a two. Clearing up the front means They'll have easy access to the rocks in the house. Almost got the accidental triple at the back, but uh, does clear both yellows. Nudges the red, doesn't put it on the rings, I don't think. And uh, leaves the yellow wide open in the back of the eight foot circle. Moved it over. Well, that's closer than uh, uh, we'll guess based on uh, probably visual distortion. We're gonna kind of focus in. Still can't say. I'm going to say it's not in, but I'm also going to say if it comes into play, it'll be measured. I'm going to say it's in. Based on the uh, arc of the parabola. The arc of the parabola and the center mounted camera. Well, we'll see if it uh, does come into play. But for now, the Watling call is for Laura Burtnick to go around those two reds, try to get into the top of the four foot circle. This rock is really moving. We're moving across and the discussion about whether the red one is biting or not is now moot. Well, it's not moot, it's in. As it it is out. now in for sure. We won't have to worry about it. The 
complexion of this end just changed. The Jones objective here is that in a moment, Jones will be laying first, second, and fourth. Trying to carve that across, didn't get it to curl very much, but got to the nose of it. I don't know what Mackenzie Zacharias weighs, nor would I ever ask her, but whatever she weighs, all but two pounds being the weight of her curling shoes was on the head of that brush as she was leaning on it. Tremendous amount of downward pressure. We look across at both of the other two sheets, the Team Calvert currently with five rocks in the rings and uh, not yet skip rocks to come. Joelle Locke is the third for the McLeod team and uh, she is throwing her final rock facing five as you mentioned. So the, the hit and roll out rather than in, which is the call. And over on the other sheet, the yeah. Megan Walter Ackland team playing Baudry, and there are two, four, six, there's too many to count, it's at the far end, but uh, Red, being Ackland, appears to be lying one with the final rock in transit. So Jennifer Jones is going to uh, throw an outturn hit. She'd like to be near nose, stick almost right there, fighting for three. A little bit of an inside roll over to the ones on the center line, doesn't bother her. She makes the hit and that one is biting. No question about that one. So Christy Watley, Watling, clearly wanting to throw her left-handers out turn across behind the rock uh, on the right-hand side as we view it. Um, the team recognizing that the better shot, although the tougher shot, as we said, is the rock that goes behind the two uh, using the staggered guard as protection. So we'll, uh, as Christy said, tougher to get there, but down three appropriate with Skip Stones here in the fifth to play the tougher shot. So it's underway, we'll see. She needs it to take that curl as it gets to the hog line. She snaps in as it comes to the top of the ring. She is going to get between and in behind the two reds. Just that little bit deeper than she wanted to and uh, pokes a little bit out on the other side. That rock in front of the tee line was exceptional. Jennifer is looking at the double run back just because the two rocks and the 12 foot ring are close enough that she's gonna get what's called the drag effect if she hits the top one on the outside, which seems counterintuitive, but she's certainly looking at it, decided that they're just too far apart to allow the second stone to drag onto the yellow stone, so she's going to try to outdraw Christy now. The 
physics of the drag effect is that the rocks can't be more than about three and a half or four inches apart and the overhead is showing these to maybe be just a hair outside of that. So Jennifer Jones will try to follow Christy Watling. This is Jones final stone of the end. There is one more Watling stone to come. This moment it appears to be outside the rock in the top of the 12 foot. It's not going to get the curl required. It's going to rub that rock in the 12 foot and roll to the center line. And Watling has a draw that needs to touch the eight foot circle, just short of the eight foot circle. But So over on Shide, facing four, Lisa McLeod has made a hit uh, for a single point and Lee uh, trails in that game by a score of three to one. Back on sheet C, uh, the Ackland Walter for some uh, scored a deuce on end number four and they lead that game over Baudry 4-2. Score of our game here, Jones versus Watling. Watling has a single rock in play, so it is at least 4-2. Playing the wide for Watling out turn. Draw to the eight foot for a second point. Team sweeping for all they're worth. They are not going to get it there. Needed another four to six inches of uh, distance and it is a single point, a 4-2 lead for Jennifer Jones over Christy Watling. As we go to the fifth end break, we'll be back with the sixth momentarily. Why not? Just watch. Why not? Keep scrolling eyes lie. Why not? As a broadcaster and Hall of Fame football player, I'm constantly in the lab of life. For 15 years, my friends at Not Auto Corp have been pioneers as well. Introducing Winnipeg Car Lab, custom car wraps, graphics, and auto why services. Not? Winnipeg, why not get in the lab? It means coming together, helping one another, being there, showing support. That's community. Getting together with your chums you want to curl with. It's important to volunteer, help out as much as we can. I love curling. I love curling. <laughs> RME, proud sponsor of Curl Manitoba and the Scotties Women's Provincials. With 10 locations in Manitoba, RME is your preferred Case IH equipment dealer. RME, right by you. Curling in the small town part of Manitoba is, is really big in the winter. It's something for the community to do and it really brings the community together. We can hold annual events like our bond spiels and our, and our weekly nights. It's really something to do for everyone in the community and can do it from any age. Eat. Meet. Stay. Play! Can Inn's destination centers are your home for hospitality with 10 locations in Manitoba and one in North Dakota featuring the finest in accommodations, food and beverage, entertainment, banquet and conference facilities, and so much more. For the best service and best value, your only stop is Ken Ad Inns. Call today at one 33 ken ad or visit us right now at canadins.com. Where can you find handmade delicious pizza, classic burgers, scrumptious salads, and the finest Manitoba sourced pressure cooked fried chicken? From small towns to big cities with 38 locations, Chicken Chef is comfort food you can count on. We're your made in Manitoba chicken choice and pizza choice and salad choice. And so, so, so much more. Chicken Chef, bring your appetite. We'll take care of the rest.
Asham Curling Supply. Superior fit, comfort, and performance. Asham Curling Shoes are the best we've ever used. Hi folks, I'm Arnold Asham, and our product is always satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Asham Curling Supplies. That's your best delivery of the day. When life gets busy, getting everything done can be tough. With PharmaSafe's mobile prescription service, order your prescriptions right from your phone so they're ready when you are. Download the PharmaSafe app today. Live well with PharmaSafe. At McMunn & Yates, we've always believed that good neighbors make for better communities. McMunn & Yates has everything you need for your next project right at your fingertips. And McMunnandYates.com will always be there, ready to help. Well, it is 4-2 for Jennifer Jones and her team playing the Christy Watley team, the home club team from East St. Paul. Watley with an opportunity to score two on that last end and needed to go a little wide for uh, the draw to the eight-foot circle, Barry, and uh, probably that little bit wide uh, is what did her in. It was simply a path through which a rock had not passed since the practice session and she came up all of six inches short, but that's the difference between ice that has rocks gliding over the pebble and pebble that's been sitting for an hour and a half. So Watley Trail, uh, Watling Trails, 4-2. Jones does have Hammer at the even numbered end, the sixth end. Watling plays that center guard, touching center line. Uh, a little more than halfway to the rings. Jennifer, true to form, goes right after it, using the guard for her own protection as opposed to setting up a corner guard. Classic Jen Jones strategy, especially with a lead. Line's good. Sarah Pike with her second shot of the end. She'll go right into the face of the red stone if she can get there. Just a little too heavy though and doesn't curl up, gets that bump and rolls open. You heard Jennifer say she wants to get low, she wants to cross the face of the Yellowstone to get a roll to the inside. Making further use of the guard put there by Christy Watley. Curling hard as it comes to the top of the ring, she is going to get the inside roll, but rolls right wide open. Watling looking for a nose hit, and again a little perhaps low side to roll. Not unhappy if she's got a red rock behind her yellow shot after this. As it comes to the hog line, as we said before, it begins to snap. She's going to overcurl the first one. She will, in fact, pick the one out of the back of the forefoot, or biting the button, roll right over dead behind her yellow guard on the button. That was a tough 
outcome to achieve without calling it. Yeah. But what's interesting is Jennifer Jones is going after the perfectly covered Yellowstone on the button regardless. Further evidence of how good the ice is here tonight, Resby. But also an indication that uh, this being rock number six, uh, if she does overcurl and rub that center guard, it's okay. Yes. She's going to chase it. She hopes to get past that center line guard to the shot rock on the button. Strong sweep call. Doesn't get it, but doesn't move it either. It's again, one of those rubs that needed to be a little more of a rub. Not to be a failure, and it uh, didn't, it was. And by the way, had that been one of the first five rocks, a little rub like that would be perfectly legal. It would have been because it stayed touching the center line. So this is Emily Raffinson. Wants to get to the forefoot. Concerned about how tight they're going to be to that yellow guard. They're going to, in fact, overcurl the center line. Not a bad result. Kenzie Zacharias is looking for an outturn hit, trying to run it through, but uh, never does get the to the nose of it, hits and rolls away. So Watling needing to score one point at a time with Last Rock will try to place the center guard. Pretty much what was called for. Maybe a little deeper than the desired, but certainly forces Jones to play the run back again. Watch the path of this rock. The brush is right on the center line. And Carly Burgess is going to release it. Gonna get Runs through, takes out the, uh, the one yellow stone at the top of the rings, and uh, but does leave another guard for Watling to take advantage of. So she was looking for a rock into the top of the rings, but that certainly is effective. You just try to make this, Carly. Yeah, I like it. Okay. When she says, That's just try to make this, she's talking about removing the two guards, rolling the shooter away to the wall.
last of the third stones for the Jones team, Carly Burgess. Trying to blow everything up in front, which she's done pretty effectively. So now we've gotten to the point where the guards are gone and uh, one yellow, one red in the rings. Watling will try to hit that red stone roll away to the right hand side as we look at the picture. But stay in the rings, try to get sufficient split on the rings to force the Jones team to take a single point. She's likely to leave Jennifer at least a shot at a double here. And Jennifer wouldn't be unhappy with a blank if it turns out that way because it shortens the game. There will only be... Any roll, good. She does roll almost perfectly. It's not flat, but it's near flat. The force is on. There was the thought of attempting a roll under the red guard that is a corner guard in order to get a skip's deuce, Jennifer's two stones ultimately counting, but she's taking a more conservative approach, content just to roll away from the center line in the direction of the other yellow stone. Rolling, rolling under the guard is going to put a rock behind the tee line and uh, um, Watling might just decide to draw to it to, uh, to force her to take the single. So the decision is to throw the outturn hit, try to get the outside of the yellow stone in the button and roll to the outturn side. It's going to curl up, get right to the nose of it. And this leaves Watling the opportunity to play the hat and roll to use that guard to, to have the absolute force but needs to stay in the rings. Christy Watling with her final shot of this sixth end. It is curling now to the center line. She's going to get a hit and roll a little bit in that direction. But it would appear that the double would be in play. I think Jennifer would play for the single, however, would she not, Barry? She will. A 5-2 lead, uh, knowing that her team is uh, playing very well. Uh, that's a pretty comfortable position for Jennifer Jones to be in. Final shot of the sixth. Out turn hit down the center line. It'll curl to the center line as it comes to the top of the rings and it does make that nice contact for a single point and Jennifer Jones leads Christy Watling by a score of 5-2. We'll recap the other scores when we come back after this break. Today's sponsor, PharmaSafe. Canada's Community Pharmacy is proud to support Canada's Community Game. 
At McMunn & Yates, we've always believed that good neighbors make for better communities. McMunn & Yates has everything you need for your next project right at your fingertips. And McMunnandYates.com will always be there, ready to help. You can win a pair of tickets for the 2023 Tim Hortons Briar in London or the 2023 BKT Tires and OK Tire Men's Worlds in Ottawa plus $500. Or maybe equip your team with a set of four of Asham's new Ultra Force brushes. And at the same time, support the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame and Museum and Curl Manitoba's Curling for Life Endowment Fund. Raffle tickets are available now. One for $5, four for $10, 10 for $20. Buy online at fundingchange.ca slash curlmanitoba or scan the QR code on your screen right now. Well, we're back here at Center Ice on the evening of the first day of the Manitoba Scotties Tournament of Hearts, presented by Rocky Mountain Equipment. Jennifer Jones and her team have built a 5-2 lead after six completed ends, playing the Christy Watling team from the East St. Paul Curling Club. And uh, Jones having just been forced to take a single point on the sixth, has thrown her stone uh, right in the center of the rings, uh, biting the Scotty's logo on the button. Watling asks Sarah Pike to play a corner guard. Jennifer doesn't buzz a guard because she knows Watling's gonna have to set a corner guard regardless. So now with her next stone, she's gonna ask for a guard and uh, it's game on. Said I would recap scores if we look across. Uh, Alyssa Calvert has scored one on the sixth end. Calvert leads McLeod by a score of four to one. Grace Baudry scored a single on the fifth end. They're just into Skip Rock's uh, third final stones on the sixth. Baudry trails four three against the Abbey Ackland Megan Walter foursome. And back here at center ice, Lauren Lenentine throws a center guard touching center line, nicely covering the shot stone thrown with her first stone. Sarah Pike playing from the center to the wings, trying to take advantage of the corner guard she played with her first stone. She's gonna come a little bit deep. I think Christy wanted that a little higher, but it is on the tee line, fully behind. This is interesting, uh, filling up the button area with an extra redstone is aggressive, but she has confidence in Mackenzie Zacharias to be able to freeze it right on. And then Christy Watling's gonna have a big decision to make. She's gonna have to start playing the middle. So I think as I watched that interchange or exchange between Mackenzie and Jennifer, Jennifer uh, asked, you know, to, do we go to the outside, past the corner to the one on the outside? Do we go to the center? I think if she had got a strong expression of opinion from Max, Max, Mackenzie Zacharias that uh, I want to play the one to the outside, I think I, it's there and I, and I can make it. I think that's the shot Jennifer would have played. Yes. Uh, she didn't get that. Uh, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but just an indication that that uh, Mackenzie didn't have strong confidence in the shot and, and Jennifer had a stronger feeling about the shot to the center. So, uh, so the, in the end, uh, I, I kind of like that exchange. I think that that 
showed some respect for uh, Mackenzie's history as the skip. Um, the fact that she's throwing the second stone, she's going to have to make the shot. If she thought she could make it, Jennifer would have called it, but she, she didn't get that indication. And look what they get here. Uh, essentially a miss because clearing off the front means that Watling has one less rock to put in scoring position. Being three points ahead, they're taking no chances with having another yellow rock behind that corner guard. And the easiest shot, the most guaranteed shot, is to peel off the yellow guard, which is exactly what Mackenzie's being asked to do. Keeping in mind, this is only the fourth Jones rock of the end. Not a good delivery on that, but uh, trying to get a little bit of a sweet and <laughs> I guess she could see a little bit of that yellow one behind that guard. Not a good release on that. The comments I made are to be ignored because nobody was contemplating what effectively was a bit of a miss. That said, the Jones team is still not in bad position. They lie two in the forefoot. Watling has decided to play to the face of them, push one out the back and sit in front of the other. did roll out. So she moves both red rocks around, but doesn't really get a result that works very well for the Watling team. Jones now hits over here on this side, stays here, the, the rings are split. Once again, uh, forcing the Watling team to a single point is essentially winning the end, if not the game, for Jennifer Jones. It's this being the seventh end. Yep, yep. Let's get a little hit, a little inside roll. So Laura Burtnick throwing an intern hit. Wants to curl a bit to get an inside roll. She's not going to get very much of that. She's going to get pretty much a nose hit. Jones lies one, nose hit. We'll have her lying two. She looks at whether or not a double is there after she does hit on the nose of it. Carly Burgess with her intern hit. So is going to hit and roll to the outside. And we'll roll right out of the rope. Oh, does spin back. That one does. And we'll sit as a biter. Not likely that biter will come into play, but it has happened. So Watling will throw a draw. Try to take advantage of that corner guard. And she does near Barry.
flying open side? Yeah, I think so. Well, we didn't get a clear indication, and uh, that was more a question than a statement from the front end, but uh, it's my instinct to assume that as well. She is drawing to the open side, hopefully uh, right on the tee line, leaving no possibility of a double. And likewise, leaving no possibility of bringing those two yellow rocks and the 12 foot into play as counters at exactly. the end of the end. So Jennifer Jones, first shot of this seventh end, out turn draw, wants to come across the center line, come to the eight foot on the other side of the rings on the tee line. It's gonna slide a wee bit deep, but well, perhaps deep enough that now the Watling team can play a hit and roll over. They really have no choice other than to try it, otherwise their end is over. So not playing a double kill, but playing to hit and roll over in the hopes that in some way that red disappears and uh, they have a chance to yeah, score nice. the two yellows under the guard. Watling's first stone underway. Early sweep call indicating a little bit of concern about the Amata curl. Now calls them off and uh, they'll try to get that hit and roll. Right over to it. So Christy Watling did the best she could do to uh, to get this yellow over beside the red. Uh, Jennifer now in a position where she's got to try to figure out how not to allow Watling to have a shot for a possible three. See in a moment, it's Jennifer Jones with her last shot, an intern hit. Wants to get to the nose of the Yellowstone. Starts to curl up to it. She's going to hit, she wants roll, to roll a little bit back to it. But she has left Christy Watling a nose hit for a three. So she, she has successfully brought those two yellows under the guard into play. Jennifer really had no other option. She discounted the idea of rolling the other way, knowing that it would uh, provide Watling with a fairly straightforward double based on the way the rocks would have been staggered. So she was hoping to flop right on top of her back rock and almost did but an up weight hit here should clear those two out and allow her shooter to stick so now Christy Watling with her out turn hit needs to be on the nose of this rock does make in fact that nice double kill Jennifer Jones uh, puts her hand in the air Salute to Christy Watling, a double kill for a three to tie the game 
and uh, after seven completed ends, we are now tied at five all and looking very much now, Barry Gorlick, as if we'll go for 10. We'll uh, see, however, when we come back for the eighth in just a moment. Today's sponsor, Sunrise Credit Union, building a brighter future together. RME, proud sponsor of Curl Manitoba and the Scotties Women's Provincials. With 10 locations in Manitoba, RME is your preferred Case IH equipment dealer. RME, right by you. Where can you find handmade delicious pizza, classic burgers, scrumptious salads, and the finest Manitoba sourced pressure cooked fried chicken? From small towns to big cities, with 38 locations, Chicken Chef is comfort food you can count on. We're your made in Manitoba chicken choice, and pizza choice, and salad choice, and so, so, so much more. Chicken Chef, bring your appetite. We'll take care of the rest. Well, we're back in the arena. A bit of a dramatic change. Don't worry about it. Double kill by Christy Watling. Brings a pair of rocks into play that had been uh, behind the corner guard. It looked all the world as if they weren't going to uh, have a bearing on the end. But in fact, they did. Double kill to score a three. A big, big boost for a young team to score that three against Jennifer Jones and tie the game. Two superb shots by Christy Watling, uh, and uh, couldn't have turned out better. Tie game um, is the good news. The bad news is it's the eighth end, and Jennifer Jones has the hammer in eight, and at least theoretically will have the hammer in ten. Two hammers to one, tied. The odds of winning the game are 85 to 90 percent. But that said, it's a slippery game, and we'll see how this end plays out. This is a pivotal end. Jennifer is going to do everything she can to score two here. And, and obviously goes without saying that uh, the odds of Watling winning are way better now than they were at the start of the last end. So we look across the sheets again, and the Ackman walter team now leads by a score of 6-3. Put another deuce on the board, and they are playing in the seventh end. In the seventh end, the Calvert team, the Calvert team, stole a single point on the seventh end, and they lead by a score now of 5-1 over the McLeod team. And I think the same applies to the Calvert team. The comment that I made earlier in the game about the Jensen team, uh, the Calvert team, uh, um, they weren't annihilated completely, but uh, they did not pull, play the full game uh, earlier. And uh, so they've shown uh, good resilience to come back out tonight and, uh, and play uh, uh, a really good game uh, against a pretty good team, not, not one of the top seeds by any means, but this McLeod team uh, had won their first. So. so this end unfolds exactly as uh, every end going this direction has done. The uh, uh, first rock thrown by the Watling team is a center line guard on the center line. The first rock thrown by the Jones team is right behind it uh, to the button. The uh, second rock thrown by the Watling team follows to, uh, uh, to the face of it in the, uh, and then uh, Jones follows again and taps, tap that yellow one up onto the button. And Watling now is trying to rattle them just enough to change the angles so that ultimately there can be access to move the Jones rock that may be shot off the button. They do come up. That little bit short, and now Jennifer will try to peel off a couple of guards. Three rocks in the rings, two in front. So this is the sixth rock of the end. Mackenzie Zacharias throwing the hit. She's just going to get 
the double by the narrowest of margins, curled up a little bit more than she wanted to, but has left that center guard, but did peel off the two yellows. At least the center guard is the right color now, but she would have preferred to roll it to the side as well. And at least there is only one guard rather than two, so a couple of improvements, but still Watling not unhappy with the situation. She has that rock on the button. We'll try to get behind the center guard to the cluster. This is Emily Raffinson. And she just uh, overthrew a draw. Uncharacteristic, but um, just a slight lapse in concentration, perhaps. They said that the hog to hog time was 13 4, which is a second quicker. Uh, than the ice is actually running at the moment. So Jennifer will hit that center guard, her own stone. Hoping to hit and roll away, does just that. So you heard Laura Burtnick, they'll uh, try to clear, really they'll, they're trying to clear every rock out of the rings with this shot if they can. And she is throwing this hard. The out turn hit. Does exactly, rolls all three of those rocks out but does not, in fact leaves a biter behind the corner guard. very easily could come into play. And that's just a little bit of bad luck. That's as hard a stone as we've seen thrown all day. And it just grabbed. Just that little back corner. She just needed to not quite cut as much. She just got, she curled a quarter of an inch too much to the center. So the Jones team has the opportunity now to go wide, they'll play the nose hit and set a pair. It's a fairly good angle though and the uh, Watling team can hit and roll across, not necessarily all the way across, but certainly over into the range. Burtnick out turn hit. She wants to roll to the center, across the center if she can. And Jones will be content to trade rocks out here. Sweep call, trying to get it to curl a bit to get to the nose of it. Rolls a little bit wide, but sits with two biters. The Ackland uh, Baudry game has just resulted in another steal of two by Abby Ackland's team, which is going to put that score at eight to three at the end of seven. No, it is 
big roll, it's not there. Close to half. Watling still wants to get the roll to the inside across to the center line, try to get rocks in a position where a double might be possible. This we're right across the house double. Not really practical. He's gonna get to the nose, he's gonna roll a little inside, but not very much. Again, shot stone. The tiniest of inside rolls will give Jennifer Jones two shots counting. And it really is looking as if two is in the cards for Jennifer. Even though there are no rocks anywhere near the forefoot. Right. right. Yeah, that unfortunate, that one little biter hung on when uh, Laura Burtnick had uh, thrown such a nice shot to, to blast all three, but just curled up that little bit too much and left the red rock hanging over there, leaving the opportunity now for Jennifer to hit, sit on the top of the rings. Gets to the nose of it. Does not get any roll whatsoever. Can, you can't get it at all, can you? No. Okay. Like can't get it, meaning can you hit it? And, and no. But they can draw to it. If they can make the draw to it. They force Jones to take a single point. That also interprets as you have to throw it, so you decide what you're going to do. And she will draw. Higher percentage opportunity here of forcing a single with a good draw. Curl it a long oh, way across. That really didn't do what they expected it to do. Didn't, they had it, to wait on it to curl, and some of the weight scrubbed off, and by then it was too late to keep it moving. Needed to be on that line another two feet, it would have been okay. A little bit more weight, it would have curled a little bit, but it uh, does leave Jennifer Jones the opportunity to throw out turn, hack weight to the nose of the yellow, punch it out the back past the red to lie the two after all. So it's underway, an opportunity for Jennifer Jones to score that next deuce at the home end, the even numbered end. And she does make that shot to sit a pair. Nice little roll over behind that guard. Doesn't have to be behind the guard, but scores a deuce. Although there is some kind of conversation underway, we're not sure exactly what about. I didn't see where it was rolling, but 
from my perspective, yeah. I didn't think it was rolling out, but it's yeah. totally your call. Like, I thought I, the shot was made, but... You, you hit it, like, here? I just I hit, missed I how we hit eights. it. We just, oh, like, no, I was talking about Lauren, if oh, Lauren I hit it. No oh. Okay. What's the call here? Please, sir. Did you guys see it? Like, did, was it looking like it was... I didn't... What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you guys like? I just touched it with my foot. So we just don't know if it's going out or not. It wasn't rolling out. It wasn't rolling out. shot yet. I was sure she had made yeah. the shot. What's the ruling? We just decide, Lauren's nowhere near well, the rock at the up moment. Up. Yeah. She's not there by herself. Yeah. Mackenzie yeah. ran the house. So. There did not appear to be a great deal of contact. Yeah. I know, I just wish I saw it because I don't want to take the important We were calling the curl, so like, as a fun I didn't think it was Yeah. I would just leave it, like... Want to say it's two? Yeah. 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 Thanks. Thanks, right. guys. Yeah. So it will stay as a deuce. I mean, the Jones team it, scores really two. Yeah. Uh, from our perspective, like there wasn't any real contact no, with that redstone. It may have touched yeah. her foot on the way past or something, but uh, I would not suggest there had been. Uh, but in the end, it is uh, for the officials and for the opposition, the Watling team, to make the call. Um, and the call is that it is a deuce. Jones leads by a score of 7-5, coming now to the ninth end. Back across the way, Lisa McLeod has just put a three on the board in the eighth end, so that game is considerably tighter now than it was. It is 5-4 for Calvert playing in the ninth, and it is, as we've said, 8-3 for the Ackland Walter team against Grace Baudry playing in the eighth. We'll be back with... Thank you for hand. joining us for this Manitoba Championship draw brought to you by Seagram's VO. Masterfully blended, distinctly Canadian. You can win a pair of tickets for the 2023 Tim Hortons Briar in London or the 2023 BKT Tires and OK Tire Men's Worlds in Ottawa plus $500. Or maybe equip your team with a set of four of Asham's new Ultra Force brushes. And at the same time, support the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame and Museum and Curl Manitoba's Curling for Life Endowment Fund. Raffle tickets are available now. One for $5, four for $10, 10 for $20. Buy online at fundingchange.ca slash curlmanitoba or scan the QR code on your screen right now. Curling in the small town part of Manitoba is, is really big in the winter. It's something for the community to do and it really brings the community together. We can hold annual events like our bond spiels and our, and our weekly nights. It's really something to do for everyone in the community and can do it from any age. So the ninth end opens with a Jones guard just short of the rings on the center line, about a foot and a half, and a Watling corner guard. Just to remind viewers who perhaps don't often watch competitive curling, competing objectives here, Watling desperately wants to get a deuce to at least go into the last end tied even though she won't have hammer. Jennifer Jones equally desperately wants to force Watling to a single. Better still to try to set up a steal if she can. I didn't think it was that bad of her hand. So we'll see Watling try to take advantage of that corner guard as she did in the previous end. That seventh end when two rocks behind that corner, corner guard eventually came back into play to be part of a score of three. They'll throw the nice draw, buried well in front of the tee line, well buried out in the 12 foot. And Jennifer now with a couple of rocks in the center of the rings is going to go around them. Back, back eight. Line's a bit 
There's just no let up in uh, in the Jones attack. The, uh, the Watling team, uh, in many times in many games, you'll see teams both almost consensually decide to take it easy for an end, a blank end or whatever. Uh, Jennifer Jones, uh, uh, there's none of that that she does not ever let up. She attack, attack, attack. And that's why she's always mindful of the time because teams will even play a series of rocks in the house with upweight hits to save time collectively over an end. You can play an end of curling in under three minutes if all you're doing is throwing upweight hits. Jennifer's DNA doesn't permit that. So that rock goes deep into the forefoot. Emily Raffinson with her first rock hit. She's going to hit, clear the guard, roll over, rolls a little too far. Covers the outside. The same set of choices offered two ends ago, as a matter of fact, with the same team member in the hack. And this time they're opting to clear the side. So they're going to try to, to run yellow onto yellow. There's a possibility of yellow onto yellow onto yellow and rolling to the center line at the same time. She's going to get the center line side. She gets the double. She does get the triple combination. Leaves one yellow guard, but removes that rock, uh, the corner guard and the one behind it. Leaving Christy Watling no choice other than to make some kind of a play on one of the reds near the center line. Just want to get to a realistic statement of objective. She's going to play a, a red angled in, but mainly her objective is to hit and roll out to set up the corner guard, the two corner guards again. It's Emily Raffinson's second stone of the end. Wants to roll to the outside, sit, but will roll a little too far. Okay. Still in play, however. I think I like here. Do you like the in or the out? Um, uh, yeah, whatever. Intern. Whatever you think. Well, we're throwing this intern. Yep. Top four, guys. Jennifer knows the ice for both the intern and the outturn, but interestingly, is saying to the person in the hack throwing, pick the turn you want. And she wants the intern. She wants to come deep into the eight foot, perhaps even bite the four foot behind the center line guard. And it begins to snap from the hog line in. Go, 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 finish. Hard. Hard, Matt. You've got to go. Go, 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 go. It's at half into the eight foot. Jennifer was quite right. We, we do know this in turn draw. I suggest that at this stage of the game, it doesn't matter if they like the draw. The uh, simple fact is that down two, facing two, they're going to have to play the draw. There's an idea that you can play a little bit of a tap hit. The problem is that essentially requires you to hope for the other team to miss. And that's not a realistic hope based on the level of play from the Jones team so far tonight. Hard line. Gotta go for line. Hard line. 
but it comes to the East St. Paul logo and has already begun to curl. As it comes to the hog line, it is going to snap curl. Uh, we'll get past the top guard, but we'll come to the face of the stone just placed in there. Here again, the objective of the Jones team is to limit Watling to a single point. At this point, even a single point could be a challenge for Watling. Jones is about to lie three. She goes a little bit wider. She's hoping to get that snap curl at the end and uh, uh, just get tucked a little bit under the yellow. Just a remarkable job of sweeping on that stone. I'm going to change my earlier comment. Mackenzie Zacharias may have curling shoes that weigh two pounds. <laughs> At least one of those two pounds was added to the brush head on that one. She was right on her toes. Even though they're a few years younger than us, Resby, I can tell you at the end of that long sweep, they were completely out of gas. They were. So we're going to see Laura Burtnick play a hit on the yellow that's uh, half tucked on the center line. She cannot hit it between the two reds. So uh, if she contacts the yellow, there's going to be red rocks moving as well. Just has to keep it from curling up to touch that red center guard. This one is going to come at us very quickly. So the red rocks leave the rings. That's a superb shot, even though red is still shot rock. Jennifer's going to have to put her next one in a perfect place. Skip rocks to come, two red, two yellow. Mackenzie Zacharias lining up okay. the, the double kill. Okay. They're obviously tired of giving okay. up three spots, so they've decided they have to okay. try to make this double, which looks fairly natural. They aren't spaced too far apart, and the stagger will give Jennifer a good angle off the top one into the uh, second shot rock. Could push that second stone right across and jam it onto a red rock outside the rings. But if that happens, Jones will be lying too. Gets the contact on the first. She gets the roll across, but goes across the top of it. Hit a little too much of the first rock by an inch. So the yellow stone lies shot stone. And time now for some conversation with Coach Tom Clasper. He gets a little bit of camera time. He hasn't, uh, hasn't made an appearance on the ice yet in this game. Tom is a new coach to the Watling team within the past month or so. Massively experienced. I don't ever want to give her a double. Like yeah, I think if we freeze to it, there's never a double. It's either freeze or it's this. Well respected yeah, in the blast. sport right across the country. Make a pretty solid freeze. He is but in the Manitoba what, Curling Hall of Fame, inducted no. as a coach, and one of very few. 
uh, 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 inducted as a builder, but like a his building has building. been in the form of coaching, teaching, instructing. I know, we could just guarantee the two. He has helped a tremendous number of teams. My first thought was the freeze, because if you come down and tap it as long as Including you're Including the 2019 World Mixed Champions. Does she ever have any of this five? Skipped by Colin Kurtz with that Sarah be, Oliver yeah. okay. and Meg Walter playing on the same team, who now form part like of the Ackland team we've been discussing tonight. And a wonderful segue allowing us to say that game has ended with a final score of 10-3, Ackland over Beaudry. Ackland remains undefeated. 2-0 and after day one. And Calvert with one, two, three, four, five uh, secondary rocks. Uh, phase two with her last rock made a hit. Um, stuck, but not for a point. The red stones, the Lisa McLeod stones, count one. So it is a steal of one. And so that game will go home tied 5-5. Five, five, and the Calvert team will have hammer. Now we see Christy Watling here on our sheet. She'll go with her intern. Wants to curl back to oh, and freeze to the nose of the red oh, Joan Betty. Stone in the back oh, of the forefoot I'm circle. Better. Curl! Where? Curl! Easy, easy, we're okay for the Curl! Line. Easy! Curl! Straight! Curl! Straight! Curl! Well, there was a good deal of confusion uh, with one hollering at the top of her lungs curl, one hollering at the top of her lungs straight. Not a fact, however, is that uh, each balanced out the other and the rock ended up pretty much exactly where they wanted it. Always hard to know whether they're hoping the rock will listen the louder they yell or whether they're actually talking to the front end of the team. So we're going to see Jennifer Jones try to throw a hit past the red guard. If she can get the part of the yellow she can see, she can actually spill both yellows and, uh, frankly, break the Christy Watling team hearts. I don't know. I don't mind this. Like, do you get the double if you go by? Okay. Yeah. The other alternative is for Jennifer to come down right on top of the rock that Christy Walkling just threw. A precision shot to be sure, but she just saw it. And we see the uh, Jennifer Jones and the sweepers come to the rings. They're going to look at it. Third might, like if I hit what I can see, yeah. Yeah, that'll get it. <laughs> Yeah. The only other thing you do is you try to nose it. It's just that there's a little bit of space. Like, it's going to yeah. be hard to make it. What are you, whatever you're seeing. I don't know. You could try to get low. That's, yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. I think you got to try to nose this, but it's always going to kick this way. I think we play this. So... There we go. Jennifer has talked it through with her team. She's talked it through, more importantly, with herself because in the end, she says, I think we play this and this is the call they'll play. She's got to, as she heard her say, hit what she can see of that Yellowstone. If she can just graze by the red without touching it, she can remove both Yellowstones and roll her shooter away. Going with her first thought, never a bad idea. So Jennifer will throw her intern hit. She's got some pace on it. Wants to come past this red yard. She's not going to curl up as tight as she wanted. She's going to get the edge of it. Remove one. So as she says, just enough. 
this one's close in the sense that the Yellowstone comes to rest just past the point that the competing redstone is. So red is second shot. That really, really mattered. It really does, yeah. This allows Christy Watling to play a draw tap, but only for two to tie the game. Jones will have the hammer in 10, which as we mentioned at the beginning of the game is exactly where she wanted to find herself. Tied up coming home. And that draw will come to rest. On the button, two Yellowstones touching the button. And that's Scotty's logo as the Watling team puts a pair on the board to tie the game at 7-7. Going to the final end, Jennifer Jones and her team will have last rock and we'll have that 10th end for you in a moment. We hope you're enjoying this Manitoba Championship curling. Brought to you by Seagram's 83. Manitoba's favorite Canadian whiskey. Where can you find handmade delicious pizza, classic burgers, scrumptious salads, and the finest Manitoba sourced pressure cooked fried chicken? From small towns to big cities with 38 locations, Chicken Chef is comfort food you can count on. We're your made in Manitoba chicken choice, and pizza choice, and salad choice, and so, so, so much more. Chicken Chef, bring your appetite. We'll take care of the rest. When life gets busy, getting everything done can be tough. With PharmaSafe's mobile prescription service, order your prescriptions right from your phone so they're ready when you are. Download the PharmaSafe app today. Live well with PharmaSafe. RME, proud sponsor of Curl Manitoba and the Scotties Women's Provincials. With 10 locations in Manitoba, RME is your preferred Case IH equipment dealer. RME, right by you. Well, we are down to the, what are most likely the final ends of the opening day of the 2023 Curl Manitoba Scotties Tournament of Hearts, presented by Rocky Mountain Equipment. A trade of deuces after the dramatic three by the Watling team in the seventh end, the two teams trade deuces to come home tied 7-7 and the end starts exactly as every even numbered end has started. The Watling team throws the center guard touching the center line and the Jones team immediately goes around it. Because of the extended opening ceremonies and the late start to this draw it's almost 11 o'clock and yet remarkably the stands are still full Resby. We have devoted curling fans here in East St. Paul. Rock on the top of the button. Sarah Pike, she'll follow. All you can, as deep as is possible. Tucked around to the top of the eight foot circle, biting into the eight foot, fully buried. I don't know, what do you guys like? Unfortunately, not deep enough. Jennifer's really go here. looking yeah, at the idea of a corner freeze onto that yellow. And they'll have lots of room ultimately to run back the guard get rid of the yellow and leave red lying too.
Well, they want to get to the Yellowstone, but it appears like they'll slide a little deep into to their own stone on the button. Inadvertently, the shot Jennifer chose not to play. <laughs> but it rolled a little bit open, so uh, it presents a small opportunity for the Watling team. Skips rocks to come in the McLeod Calvert game, and a timeout has been called by McLeod. Calvert having hammer. Yep. 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 Go, go, yep. Yep. So Jennifer plays to peel off that center guard. We'll do a little old time radio for you on uh, that sheet A. There are a pair of guards, a red and a yellow cornered on each other, yellow touching the center line. There's a yellow rock, which is the Calvert rock, biting the button uh, on the T line, well buried. There's a red rock, a McLeod rock, biting the back of the button from our vantage point. Can't be sure which is shot stone, but McLeod is playing a outturn draw to try to play past the guards and tap the yellow stone. Emily Raffinson with her draw. This is Mackenzie Zacharias. Her, her second stone, her final stone of the end, she's going to rip yeah. off that guard. Good. Peels off the guard, as you can see, and uh, just to prove we can do two things at once, the McLeod draw to the forefoot touches the yellow stone that uh, is, uh, may or may not be shot stone, but uh, sits uh, on the button. Laura Burtnick looking to replace the guard it was, as you heard them say, very well positioned. They felt could have been a little deeper, but uh, had the line they wanted. They're really trying to cover both yellows. They're trying to color, cover the center of, of the line of the yellows. And that is the Laura Burtnick guard touching center. It'll be ripped off. Carly Burgess's first stone, another peel of that center guard just placed there by Laura Burtnick, keeping in mind that Jones continues to lie too in the forefoot. But with two yellow rocks, that either one can be promoted by the Watling team. So to some extent, both teams quite contented. And now the Watling team will make their move.
Looking across to the other sheet, the Calvert stone uh, appeared to overcurl a little bit, tapped what was uh, probably second shot rock at the time, pushes it back into the back of the forefoot, rolls across, sits in the forefoot as well, but the McLeod team has shot rock covering the pinhole, uh, about to throw a guard. That's on the other sheet, not on this sheet, folks, in case you think I've lost track of what I'm talking about. We're still a slight hallucination of a game from years past. <laughs> exactly. The McLeod team, though, with a perfectly placed guard, is going to have the Calvert team needing a very difficult shot to try to score. So it is Laura Burtnick, and she now will be playing a tap. Needs to get to the nose of the yellow rock on the center line in the top of the rings. Got a curl to the nose of it. Makes that direct nose contact, pushes it back. Red still lies one, probably two. Jennifer does not like the two yellow stones ahead of her own because either one of them can be promoted in a way that will be very unhelpful to Jennifer's last stone of the end. Rip this, the three, so she's the thinking going. seriously about trying to remove as many yellow stones eight, as possible, okay. even if the reds go away in an ideal world. Jennifer draws like to this. essentially an open house, whether or yeah, not there's a single that, watling stone really in the yeah, rings. So teams take their time out. So we go back to the other sheet and uh, Lisa McLeod did make a nice guard, uh, probably four feet in front of the rings, touching the center line on the other side of the center line. And I just wandered over behind the McLeod Calvert sheet. Uh, Lisa McLeod's guard is Absolutely I think often perfect. When play this, it's catching this. Covering both of her red stones, You're, both well, of which appear to be lying one and two. Is. I think it's just pretty risky. Mm -hmm. Don't mind that. Or you, or you dead nut that. Like it, it's very hard, I think, Carly, to get that across the top. So, as yeah. our teams talk about this sheet. Jennifer wondering I don't mind which like angles we want to hit things on. She Alyssa Calvert is in the position of now playing a double. bit of a Hail Mary. Yeah. Okay, yeah. play the six. Yep. Okay, third. Yep. The call on our sheet is for Carly to catch about a third of the yellow rock that is right on the center line and punch it back into the two yellow rocks behind it. Yep. Well, it's underway, we'll see. The big weight hit, the Whoa. out turn, wants to catch Girl. third Girl. of the outside Girl. of it, jam it across, bang it onto Girl. that yellow, Real push nice those two catch. out of play. Very nice, Carly. So now we have two yellow stones, two red rocks to come. This worked out really well I'm done. I'm done. in that it opens up the entire. right side of the rings. Going to be really difficult to put some kind of a covering rock I mean, even if we in a place that Jennifer Jones can't either double the yellows out again where, where or get around them to score. I'd like a little tighter, right? yep. Keeping in mind, dead, dead on she continues yeah. to lie to. And that game beside us has ended. Lisa McLeod has stolen a single point, so uh, trailing 
by a score of 5-1 after seven ends. McLeod scored a three, stole one um, on nine, stole one on 10 for a 6-5 victory over Alyssa Calvert. Leaving the McLeod team with two wins and no losses. Another great start to the bond spiel for that team. So Christy Watling shot her intern draw. So she plays the guard Sorry. for Christy Watling. Uh, how would you describe it? All of her eggs in the last rock basket. Absolutely. Jennifer's decision is how do I, to continue the analogy, pull the bottom woven part out of that basket Where are we so going that on the eggs one? fall out. What? Where are we going? Top button. Okay. Jennifer's decision is to put a third red stone into the button. Which will make it extremely difficult for Watling to somehow fashion a shot that could remove all three of them. Or even promote her yellow one to outcount the three of them. There was a little discussion about an option, but Jennifer was heard to say no three nope. times in succession, <laughs> which I interpret to mean no. Yeah. We have to get this by. Okay. It's not rubble. Okay. I don't care if we take ours out. Okay. <laughs> There's an interesting comment. She said that she wants to, she does want to be lying three, all touching the button with Watling having a rock in the front of the four-foot circle. Speed's the same? Yeah. Okay. So it's underway. We'll see. You heard Jennifer say we do not want to touch that Yellowstone. Line's good. We'll slide by it if yeah. we have to, even if we tap the red. Well, it is going to curl to the center line. No, it is you don't! Whoa! It is going to touch that okay. yellow. Speed is really close. I can't see. I think the out has it. Oh. Yeah. Like, that guard's really not in play. Yeah. Like, if you're too tight to the guard, you're really That's play. exactly the outcome Jennifer was yeah, hoping to avoid. Yeah. We gotta get, gotta to, get uh, as close to nose as possible. So it gives Christy Watling a shot to be shot. And then Jennifer will have at least one path through which to get at that shot, Rock. Well, they're going to play the out turn draw past the center guard. Just need to wait. Need to tap that yellow stone about six inches. More like eight and a half. A very delicate shot. Ideally, just contact that yellow, push it up to bite the Scottish logo. And this is the path that has been moving beautifully past the hog line. They can expect a little more movement this late in the game because the pebble is flattened out. So we'll see, it is that left-hander's in turn that 
Barry told us a little earlier, might just curl a little more than a right-hander. She is going to get past the guard. She is going to get to the nose of the yellow. She is going to punch it too deep. No, she is not. Maybe she is. She's that shot it. tells us that right at this moment, yellow is lying shot rock. Now, is it actually too deep? Yes, because Jennifer Jones can punch her red rock up and uh, use the rock that just came to yeah, rest as backing. Yeah, it needed to yeah. stop on the front of the Scotty's logo, not on the back of the Scotty's logo. Down, yep. So, the, the game that started a couple hours ago, Jennifer Jones having last rock as Barry Gorlick so wisely yeah. told us. Jennifer Jones wanted to have last rock in her hand to win the game, and that's the shot. It is a tie game. It is final shot to win the game for Jennifer Jones. And it's awfully helpful to both the rock and the person throwing it to know that the thrower's name is Jennifer Jones. Okay. Really good release. Yep, yes, yes! Hard! Hard! That's underway. Hard! It does make the contact to leave two reds. And Jennifer Jones scores yet another deuce with last rock in the even end. For a 9 7 win for Jennifer Jones. McLeod beats Calvert, 6-5. Ackland beats Beaudry. And that wraps up day number one of the Manitoba Scotties Tournament of Hearts. We'll be back at East St. Paul tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. Please join us. Today's sponsor, Sunrise Credit Union, building a brighter future together. Eat. Meet. Stay. Play! Canad Inn's destination centers are your home for hospitality, with 10 locations in Manitoba and one in North Dakota, featuring the finest in accommodations, food and beverage, entertainment, banquet and conference facilities, and so much more. For the best service and best value, your only stop is Canad Inns. Call today at 1-888-33-CANAD or visit us right now at canadins.com. You can win a pair of tickets for the 2023 Tim Hortons Briar in London or the 2023 BKT Tires and OK Tire Men's Worlds in Ottawa plus $500. Or maybe equip your team with a set of four of Asham's new Ultra Force brushes. And at the same time, support the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame and Museum and Curl Manitoba's Curling for Life Endowment Fund. Raffle tickets are available now. One for $5, four for $10, 10 for $20. Buy online at fundingchange.ca slash curlmanitoba or scan the QR code on your screen right now.